Yes, I'd like to pre-order six Sail on Sailor 5LP Deluxe box sets, please. What do you mean, limit of four? Yeah, this is Betamax Blocker. Yeah, I won't call anymore. Alright, I'm glad you remember me. Like and subscribe. Hello. Never mind. As the next part of our series on Beach Boy's Greatest Hits packages, I thought it was about time we get to what is perhaps the most important title on the list. But for such an important title, with just something that completely changed and revitalized the Beach Boys' career, both at the time and their future trajectory, there really isn't much I could find to say about it. I had a really hard time writing down my information for this. That release, the fifth episode in our little escapade, 1974's Endless Summer. The Beach Boys were trying new things in the early 70s, albums like Carl and the Passions, and Holland were at least minor successes, but they were nowhere near the success the group had in the 1960s. And trying these very spiritual, very avant-garde songs, trying to be hip and with the times, wasn't working for the group consistently. It had its moments, but nothing that was really, you know, going to turn the group's commercial slump around overnight. In 1973, Capitol put out two different double LP sets for the Beatles. The Red Album, 1962-1966, and its follow-up, The Blue Album. Both of which were good showcases of Beatles songs. The Blue Album is 67 through 1970. Both of them good showcases, and both of them doing very well on the charts. And this prompted everyone to realize, with the success of these records, that maybe, um, you know, Capitol Records could do something similar for the Beach Boys, who had the, really the only group that rivaled the Beatles in terms of sales throughout the 60s. So Capitol's response in June of 1974 was to release Endless Summer. Pretty cool. So let's do the track list first. This is a double LP set, so it has a gatefold there and two separate records. On our first record, Surf and Safari, Surfer Girl, Catch a Wave, Warmth of the Sun, Surf in USA, Side 2, Be True to Your School, Little Deuce Coop, In My Room, Shut Down, and Fun Fun Fun. Side 3, I Get Around, Girls on the Beach, Wendy, Let Them Run Wild, and Don't Worry Baby. And our last side, California Girls, Girl Don't Tell Me, Help Me Rhonda, You're So Good to Me, and All Summer Long. A lot of songs that are instantly recognizable, even by young people today. These are a lot of the Beach Boys songs that they know. Take a quick look at the records. The records are set up in such a way that so, uh, side one and side four are on one record and two and three are on the other. So here's like the side one. If you flip it over, that's side four. This way if you had a record player with a, like a changer on it, like a little spindle you could stack things on, you could play one and two, flip them both over, and play three and four. And we get nice capital orange on the record labels, so that's pretty neat. Not the first double LP in the Beach Boys catalog, but certainly one of the first to be in there. Uh, Beach Boys in Concert came out the previous year. This really borrows from those Beatles sets. For example, the Red and Blue albums have no covers on them. They are all Beatles originals. Endless Summer is the only major Beach Boys hits compilation to have no covers. These are all Beach Boys originals, not all Brian Wilson. Uh, some are, of course, are Brian Wilson, Mike Love, and there are some familiar names in there. Roger Christian and Gary Usher and Chuck Berry gets a writing credit on um, Surfing USA. That was the result of the lawsuit. Also, it doesn't just jump for all the big hits. The Red and Blue albums were a mixture. Major charting singles, popular album cuts, you know, kind of B-sides and lesser singles. Endless Summer follows that same idea. There were several major charting successes for the group that are not included on here, such as When I Grew Up To Be A Man, Dance, Dance, Dance. Um, I guess you could count Little Saint Nick, maybe, seeing as how so many of the previous releases featured Christmas songs. Who knows? But definitely a little bit different. These uh, records, this double album, 
only contains songs from 1962, Surf and Safari being the only one, through 1965. Of the first 10 Beach Boys LPs, 62 to 65, uh, only eight of them are covered. Concert and Christmas are ignored. There's nothing past the Summer Days and Summer Nights album from mid-1965. I'm not really sure if that was a stylistic choice, just to keep these early kind of summery tunes, or if that was done maybe some of the legal issues, because in the mid-60s the Beach Boys formed their Brother Records label, and that was probably a, you know, a bit of a legal contrivance there, so I don't really know why they decided to do it that way. It's a pretty limited scope for a group that had been going over a decade by that time. The songs are sort of in chronological order, but they're also grouped kind of thematically too. Uh, the surfing songs, the car songs, are all kind of clustered together, and there are a few kind of jumbled in there in between. So it's not exactly chronological or exactly thematical, it's kind of a combination. I do think it works. Uh, Surf and Safari makes a great opening as the oldest song there, and All Summer Long makes a very strong closer and helps to kind of tie this whole summery time uh, hits package together. I like that a lot. Maybe the weirdest thing is that neither Help Me Rhonda nor Be True to Your School are the popular charting single versions. Both of them use the album cuts. Be True to Your School uh, not having the cheerleaders, the honeys as the cheerleaders. Push them back, push them back. That's not on here. And it uses the original Help Me Rhonda from Beach Boys Today, Rhonda without an H. And that song has like the weird fade effects. It has the little intro piece that goes doo -doo 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 -doo. I like that. But it's interesting that they opted to use those in place of the more popular singles. The Wikipedia page says that some CDs uh, use the popular single versions instead. None of the ones I've ever encountered have, but I wouldn't rule it out because if there's one thing we know about the Beach Boys discography, it's that there's about 20 different mixes for every single song, and that's just the way it is. All right, so this was a big hit for the group in 1974. Topped the charts, stayed on the charts for over two years. Uh, the second chart-topping uh, album in the U.S. It, uh, Rolling Stone voted them Band of the Year. Their touring act increased, more, more tours, more successful tours, bigger venues. They weren't doing the avant-garde stuff so much anymore. They were fully a nostalgic commercial group again. Definitely changing things up and going for the oldies. Beach Boys music had been used nostalgically before this. Things like American Graffiti, uh, Shampoo, movies like that. But this was really the big nostalgia kick that a lot of Americans wanted and needed. It is currently certified about triple platinum. I think it would be higher than that if they didn't discontinue this several times because as the Beach Boys are technically still going, uh, they can put out new hits packages with newer, more popular material every now and then. So there's no one definitive Beach Boys hits package. So that's probably why I think this could be, you know, 10 times platinum, 20 times platinum, whatever it is. But uh, because they discontinued it relatively early to make way for new stuff, that probably wasn't quite as feasible as they had hoped. Even people who weren't fans of the Beach Boys purchased this album just to have some representation of them in their collection. Robert Kreisgau marked this as part of the basic record library. Have at least one Beach Boys they can go to, this should be it. I don't know if that's necessarily true today, but that certainly does hold some merit. I know a lot of people growing up who had this in their record collection. This was the only Beach Boys thing they had. Just enough for when May or June rolls around, put a little something on. It did come with a poster, which I will show you later. The poster is very, very blue. It has a, it's just blue and red, and a little bit of white on it. It's, I like it. I hung it up in my upstairs hallway. It's a pretty cool poster. I like that it was included here, and we'll take a look at that a little later. The cover art is very psychedelic. The Beach Boys have their long hair and their shaggy beards. I thought mine got long and unkempt, but I've got nothing on them. Very much psychedelic kind of imagery, you know, you have androgynous muscular person lifting balloons. Uh, the boat's not too psychedelic, but on the back, you know, kind of the weird face on the surfboard and stuff. The psychedelic imagery and the older, more mature Beach Boys appearance doesn't really fit with the material on here because they were all, you know, very young. This is stuff from like the beginning of their career. So I don't know if this was made 
to kind of promote the contemporary Beach Boys, even though it wasn't really about them. It's hard to say. I'm not sure why, but this cover imagery has become very famous. If you watch my Sounds of Summer unboxing, one of the bonus lithographs that's included is this image. Yeah, I know a lot of Beach Boys, like cover bands and tribute bands and stuff, uh, have used this image or like a similar take on this image for their stuff. All right, so you can get uh, Endless Summer in several different formats. On 8-track, here's the black plastic 8-track. Here's my white one, signed by Mike and Bruce. Watch my Beach Boys 8-track video to talk about Mike and Bruce's reactions to signing an 8-track in 2018 or so. That's pretty interesting. You could get it on cassette tape. Here's... Um, I don't want to show you that one yet. just want to show you the plain one here. Uh, the Something I needed to mention in my Beach Boys Volume 2 video was that the 8-tracks and cassettes tend to change the order of songs. Not omit songs, but change the order around. So just be aware if you do purchase them, it might not be in exactly the same order. That's just done to accommodate, you know, the amount of uh, tape there is in those cartridges, in those cassettes. That's all it is. You still get the same material. And you could also buy Endless Summer on CD. Here's my CD from the 80s. It has the very 80s design kind of the silver with the little squares with the numbers in there. The liner notes are just the track list and this little thing talking about how CDs work and what some of the symbols and logos and stuff on the package mean. The big deal about the CD is it includes a bonus track, Good Vibrations, which fits very well with this psychedelic imagery on the front. Good Vibrations, very popular song, certainly couldn't hurt the set in any way. I like that a lot and it replaces All Summer Long as the finale. Um, kind of an odd choice, but at the same time, I like it. I think it works for what it is. Endless Summer was released in Europe, and I'm probably in Australia too for that matter, as a single record. I'll briefly show that to you. This is on MFP, Music for Pleasure. So you have 10 songs, and you flip it over, another 10 songs. This record is so light and flimsy, I don't know. It's interesting, and I mean, there are, those songs are on there. There's not a second more of space on either side of that LP. Surprisingly, though, Endless Summer did not catch on. I'll put that away later. <laughs> Endless Summer did not catch on in the UK, didn't really chart. The UK would get its ultimate hits package, 20 Golden Greats later, a couple years later. We'll talk about that when we get to 1975, 1976 or so. So, it released in those territories, didn't really catch on. So in the end, this is one of the most important Beach Boys albums, left a big legacy, recruited a whole new generation of fans, and cemented them as an oldies act, as a nostalgic act. And they began to push into that image a lot. Summertime songs all year round. Of course, the Beach Boys magazine, Endless Summer Quarterly, takes its name from this album. Pretty cool. It's an important album, a must-have, I think, for any fan, just to see how one hits package could completely change everything. Gone were the avant-garde days, and here was having fun, fun, fun all summer long. Do you have this album? Or do you know someone who did? Please share your thoughts on it below. If you think it's the definitive Beach Boys Hits package, or maybe if something else is the definitive Beach Boys Hits package. I always like to hear from you. Next month, we'll take a break from the Beach Boys to look at some scary movies, some horror classics. Then we'll jump back in in November with its sequel, Spirit of America, and the other albums that Endless Summer randomly spawned with varying degrees of success. And of course, we'll get into the release of Ceylon, Ceylon Sailor. We'll talk about that, and hopefully I'll have one to unbox for you in the middle of November. So a few little changes coming, but I do hope you'll stick around and spend some more time with me. Until then, my friends, go out there and catch a wave. They say it's endless summer, but looking out the window, it's safe to say it is now autumn. Thank you.